Angry Old Hoops here, and you better believe I'm angry. I've been gone a while. You notice that, uh, you know, I got things I got to do besides this, but holy crap, the NBA is disgusting. Where do I start? Do I start with the announcers? Do I start with LeBron's shooting? Do I start with Shannon Sharp? Let's start with Shannon Bitch Ass Sharp. Shannon Bitch Ass Sharp. Yeah, Shannon, I know you can bench 450, 500 pounds or whatever it is, all two inches that your fucking arms can extend walking around like a fucking robot that needs to be oiled out there. You, you can't be anyone's ass because you can't fucking move you fucking roid freak you and lebron james go home and like put needles in each other's asses and then bench each other i'm sorry that was childish let's let's get to the meat of this because what was really childish is shannon starting shit at a basketball game when he's supposed to be an adult man he's supposed to be a professional analyst and out of his own mouth his own quote he says it started by him standing up and telling Dylan Brooks he was too small. Act like a fucking adult and shut your fucking mouth, first of all. What kind of LeBron James insecurities do you have when you, a professional in the business, go to a game and talk trash to the players? And not only that, but you instigate it? But... Secondly, Dylan Brooks is too small. What what are you so proud of LeBron James getting a size advantage? There's nothing to be proud of there. He's a fucking physical freak, and someone smaller than him had to guard him. W what's to be proud of there? You were you have an advantage, and you couldn't even make good on the advantage. What did he shoot? 30 something percent again? Oh, good. What an incredible player. Dylan Brooks is 6'6, 230. LeBron James is 6'9, 250, 260. Guess what? Dylan Brooks is too small to be guarding LeBron James, and he had to guard him anyway and did a pretty darn good job of it. LeBron James even had the refs on his side. Look at this. Look at this. This is in LeBron's favor. Brooks is clearly in place. He's clearly positioned. He's clearly outside of the restricted zone. LeBron just gets to go barreling in. The only thing he has is his size. That's not what the game of basketball is about 100%. You are supposed to also have to use skill to overcome your obstacles. If you are about just size, there are other sports for you. But of course, meatheads like Shannon Sharp want to talk about being too small. Nothing wrong with having a big guy on the team, but that doesn't mean that you get to break the rules and run over other people when you're big. The rules are still rules, and this is illegal. If I, if I recall correctly, LeBron James has had fans kicked out for talking trash. Shannon Sharp, who's supposed to be a professional, can stand up, walk on the court, and talk trash to somebody, and the player can't even talk back? Because out of Sharp's own mouth, again, then Brooks said, fuck you back. And then classy professional analyst Shannon Sharp said, fuck you to him. And then according to Shannon, and by the way, Shannon Sharp is standing on the court. Why isn't he kicked out? Why is he not escorted? to the exit, and not allowed to come back. You're not allowed to do that shit. No one's talking about this. No one's talking about the fact that Shannon Sharp is, one, being unprofessional, two, not acting like an adult, and three, doing things that you're not allowed to do. And then, in, according to Shannon, the next thing that happened was that Ja Morant and his dad came at no what i'm watching is that stephen adams came over and stephen adams was straight up in your mug and according to your rendition of what happened there is no stephen adams oh, what's going on here uh shannon sharp you were unaware of the giant dude that was right in front of you talking to you why is it that your play-by-play -play on what happened <laughs> 
has nothing to do with the dude that you want nothing to do with. Shannon Sharp, with his quote, guess given to Dave McCannaman, they didn't want this smoke, Dave. They do all that talking and jockeying, and I ain't about that jockeying. Oh, Shannon, the professional sports analyst, the adult sharp, is just about going straight to the fight. So what you're telling us, Shannon, is that you actually were shouting at Dylan Brooks because you were hoping to get into a brawl. You needlessly antagonize a player and you, you wanted no consequences or you are telling us that you in fact go to basketball games because you want to fight people. Is that what you're saying? I need to reiterate this in case you don't understand the point I'm making. Shannon Sharp is going out of his way to say that he isn't about all that talk and that jockeying. So when you go to a professional basketball game and start talking trash to a player, what we should take from that is that your goal is to get in a fight. Because remember, these are your words. This is your quote. You're not about that. You're not about just talking. So if you go somewhere and you're talking, I guess we should assume that you mean business. So you're showing up to professional basketball games looking to start a fight. In which case, you should be fired and banned. It started with Dylan Brooks. I said he was too small to guard LeBron. Okay, well, you're already getting your facts mixed up because it didn't start with Dylan Brooks. It started with you. You instigated. Why are you allowed to instigate players on the floor? Fans aren't even allowed to do that. Why would you, a professional sports analyst who should know better, why are you allowed to be an instigator? A really unprofessional, childish instigator. And, and oh, oh, I'm so offended. I'm so offended. I'm so disrespected because he talked back. Oh, Dylan Brooks is just supposed to allow you to talk smack. Well, Actually, yeah, he should. He should ignore you because you're a stupid fuck. But guess what? You should all be ignoring each other. Why can't any of you act like adults? We have Shannon Sharp, a TV personality, showing kids at home that you should talk smack to people when you're on the sidelines. This is the message that Shannon Sharp is telling people at home. And I know a lot of you are making fun of me because you're part of that generation. None of you got any class. You will sit on the sidelines and talk your asses off, whether you can back it up or not. You have nothing to do with the game. You're not in the game and you will talk your asses off. That is the LeBron James era of society and basketball. You are embarrassments. You are shameful. And it's sad that we have people on television getting paid to set bad examples for people. He started to come at me and I said, you don't want these problems. How did you even see him through Stephen Adams? <laughs> Let me, I got to finish the whole quote. And then Jaw came out of nowhere talking. He definitely didn't want these problems. Then the dad came and he obviously didn't want no problems. Are you cool by, by speaking this way, Shannon Sharp? Because I know you don't actually speak that way. You just turned fucking street all of a sudden. But I wanted anything that they had. Don't let these fools fool you now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What kind of an adult are you? Talking smack in an interview after the event and leaving out the only person your size or bigger that was the only one actually in your face. What an embarrassment Shannon Sharp is. If he's at another game, what the fuck is he wearing? Holy shit. I want you guys to be very, very aware in this clip that Shannon Sharp is anxiously looking at the dad. He's looking at somebody's dad while pretending that Stephen Adams doesn't exist. He anxiously wants to pretend that Stephen Adams doesn't exist. 
oh, oh, someone's dad is in the mix. Let me, let me jump on the dad. Let me get tough talking to someone's dad and pretend that this giant next to me doesn't exist. <laughs> now, if I go back and analyze the rest of this game, I'm going to bet that uh, LeBron was getting a bunch of BS calls in his favor. So he has the refs on his side. He has his size on his side. And Shannon Sharp still feels the need to talk smack. Where's your talking, Shannon Sharp, that LeBron James had four points in the fourth? From the field. Where's your talk about LeBron James shooting 8.7% from three since the new year began? Let's talk about this shot chart, Shannon Sharp. How about the fact that your boy can't make anything outside of the restricted zone? You understand that, let me read these disgusting, pathetic <laughs> stats from the game really quick. Your boy missed 13 times. And those are just on the ones that count. He also got bailed out on a bunch of other attempts and got to the go to the free throw line. 38%. Are you proud of a guy shooting 38%? Uh, he had three turnovers, but back to that 38%, look at the shot chart. If you take away LeBron James's shots in the restricted area, he was two of 12. That's 16% shooting. That's 16% shooting. What do you possibly have to be proud of? And LeBroners are going to turn around and be like, oh, he's scoring this many points per game and blah, blah, blah. Okay, guess what? If you give another professional basketball player the green light to shoot that shitty percent but keep shooting, you're going to rack up points. <laughs> I mean... If if for some reason an NBA coach put me in the game and said, don't worry about missing, just keep shooting, well, no, I'd never be able to get a shot off. Let's be honest. Let's just stick to a professional basketball player who is at least of a decent size and speed. Okay? You're, you're giving LeBron James credit for what anyone with a green light could do. And LeBron James can't even do it from outside of the restricted zone. Just keep shooting, LeBron. You know how many times he has cost the Lakers the game because of his shooting? And the only thing you LeBron fans are looking at is his point totals. And this actually even applies to games where the Lakers have won and it gets close. And you look at what happened in the fourth quarter and it's LeBron James nearly shooting them out of a game that they've had control of most of the game, then he nearly shot them out of beating the lowly Rockets. What are you people proud of? And this brings me to the regular announcers of the games. As many of you know, I, I can't even watch these with the sound on because it is nonstop coming up with any formula of stats that anyone in the writing booth can come up with to keep talking about LeBron James. But the worst one is saying what he's doing at this age and that it's amazing. But it's just that vague generality. Follow that up by saying what his shooting percentage is. If you're going to say what he's doing at this age, give us some specifics about what he's doing because his shooting percentage is piss. You want to talk about his rebounds? They're almost exclusively defensive rebounds. And you know what that means? That means that because of what LeBron James's defensive assignment is, when everyone else is already heading down the court after the shot, the ball lands in his lap. He doesn't even lift his arms above his shoulders to get these rebounds that you guys are so excited about. And then a huge percentage of that is just on free throws. Oh, free throw. Everybody leaves and it lands in LeBron's lap. Let's not talk about the freaking rebounds. And in this game in the fourth, I see that LeBron James was trying to live at the free throw line. But what was really interesting 
was, and I had to watch this on uh, the NBA app, watching just the score because I couldn't get the game live. And I'm seeing the Lakers going up one point at a time from free throws. And I realized, oh, it's Dennis Schroeder. And again, Dennis Schroeder. And again, Dennis Schroeder. And then with the steal. And then with the layups. And with more free throws. Like, the fourth was all Dennis Schroeder. Even LeBron's points in the fourth from the field. You can thank Dennis Schroeder. So LeBron James had 23 points on 21 shots. And six of those points were free throws. This just gets worse and worse. What the hell are you people proud of? 23 points on 21 shots. And six of those points weren't even actual from the shot attempts. You pathetic pieces of crap. I mean, the guy played 36 minutes and could only make eight shots. The dude made eight shots in 36 minutes this season is an experiment in what the lakers are able to overcome it's starting to make me think that they are one of the best assembled teams ever the fact that they can even compete with this piece of crap lebron james on the floor there's a whole nother topic I'd like to get into, and that's the fouls. And I talked about it a little bit with the Dallas game that I posted. And you see on the internet people saying that LeBron isn't getting calls, or you see LeBron tweeting, LeBron complaining. First of all, tweeting is a real bitch move. Tweeting is really, really a bitch ass move. And I don't know why he wasn't fined for it. It's the same thing. He's criticizing the refs. Uh, other people get fined for that. But at the end of it, he says, well, let's keep it up, squad. Oh, how inspiring. Our leader whining and complaining in a tweet, no less. And at the end, he says, let's keep it up, squad. You're such an inspiration, LeBron James, you whining bitch. Oh, this is going to take some time, some work, but... Uh... Let's uh, look at the uh, fouls. Let's look at all of these plays. I'm not done talking about the whole what he's doing at this age bit. How about if the announcers include the fact that what he's doing is sitting out every couple of games? You understand that at age 38, LeBron James has had, at his best, five consecutive games before he's chosen to sit out again? So LeBron James's streak right now at age 38 is five games. Tim Duncan, when he beat LeBron James, when he was age 38, played 74 games that season. When Michael Jordan was age 39, he played 82 games. That means he played every game, every consecutive game possible. Why isn't anyone mentioning? how often LeBron James sits out. And if it's really an ankle injury and it keeps coming back every two or three games, maybe you need to sit out and let it heal properly. If this is a real injury, you don't, you don't come back whenever the hell you want to and then re-injure it and then sit out for one game, maybe two games, and then come back. If this is an actual problem, if this ankle soreness, whatever is happening, is this persistent, then it would cause a trainer to have legitimate concern. Oh, this issue with your ankle isn't going away. We need to take this more seriously. You're going to have to sit out for a couple of weeks instead of sitting out whenever the hell you feel like it. In fact, I I was a little bit surprised that he played against Memphis. I figured that he might uh, need a rest. I mean, he did play four games in a row prior to that. Woo! And let's see, this upcoming schedule of his, Portland, not 
really an impressive team. The Clippers, garbage. San Antonio, you get to play San Antonio again? This is the fourth time this season that the Lakers get to play that garbage team. So they got Boston and Brooklyn coming up. Those are the only significant games they have. Then they got New York, garbage. Indiana, garbage. So please, announcers, just say that LeBron James is resting whenever he wants to, like an old man. So don't act impressed because he's acting like an old man. I'm surprised they don't put a easy boy reclining chair out on the court for him to rest. I mean, he he's taking breaks while he's on the court, not to mention his breaks in between games.